What is the upskies, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the GX WrestleCast. This is episode 71 of my little wrestling show where I go through all of the major WWE and AEW shows, give you the recap, give you the review, let you know if you should take the time out of your busy schedules and watch the wrestling or if you should skip it. And if you don't want to watch the whole entire show, I'll let you know if there's any really good matches you can go out of your way and check out and all that great stuff. We'll be talking about wrestling storylines and just predictions, a whole bunch of stuff wrestling here. And if there is any major WWE pay-per-views or AEW pay-per-views, I will be doing a separate episode reviewing that show. So, let's get into this bad boy. We are starting off with Monday Night Raw. They were in Atlanta, Georgia, baby. It's, uh, oh yeah, Hot Atlanta. Starting off with Cody Rhodes. He is back home in his hometown of Atlanta. The crowd is absolutely losing their minds. Cody calls out Brock Lesnar, who's not here yet, but he is coming. Just you wait. Just you wait. Cody shouts out his mama, who's in the front row, just being very, very proud of her baby boy. Cody hugging it out with the family in the front row, and then... Lesnar's music hits, but it's okay because it's just a fake out. But wait a second, the fake out was a fake out. Brock Lesnar appears. Brock beats up Cody Rhodes. He locks in a Kimura in front of Cody's mommy. Oh my God, the brutality! And he accepts the challenge for him uh, to fight at SummerSlam. And you're you're a sick puppy, Brock Lesnar. That's messed up. But a nice opening segment here. The family, you know, that's uh, critical to adding some major heat, especially in WWE. Once the family gets involved, oh shit, you done did it now. So Brock Lesnar, you messed up. But I liked it. Good, solid opening segment. We move on to Matt Riddle going up against Gunther. Imperium, Imperium is banned from ringside for this match, thank God. Riddle and Gunther, they are throwing some serious heat behind their strikes in this match said it before but Matt Riddle's been in the UFC so he is MMA trained and Gunther uh, quite notorious for throwing the heat in the indies and he is doing so in this match I'm loving it thumbs up for all that Gunther blasts Riddle with a waterboy drop kick and then a power bomb putting away Matt Riddle I mean good lord Gunther I don't know someone must have shit in his Cheerios today because he was just He looked very, very aggressive in this one, and he was just taking out his rage on Matt Riddle. Very enjoyable for us fans. Seven and a half out of ten. And then the Atlanta crowd gets the anger from Gunther as he calls out Drew McIntyre and a little heel promo right here. Pretty good. Still very much so looking forward to Drew McIntyre versus Gunther. That should be awesome. We move on. Liv and Raquel Rodriguez are getting interviewed backstage. Rhea Ripley blindsides Raquel. She goes to the ring with Judgment Day, cuts a promo, pumping up her boy Dom Dom. Priest is going to be a champion. Finn Balor is going to be a champion. The crowd is booing Dom Mysterio mercilessly. And then Sammy and Kevin Owens come out to a thunderous ovation. A crowd, very, very hot ovation. Sammy and Damian, they trade a little bit of trash talk. Kevin is just standing there. He is so freaking annoyed. He can't stand still. It's it's quite good. Sammy allows Kevin at this point to go ahead and lose it. Kevin does this gladly. Very solid, funny segment right here. Uh, Rhea Ripley looked completely badass, like shoving Liv Morgan and Raquel just out of the way. Kind of makes them look like absolute chumps. That will, uh, We'll talk a little bit more about them in a minute. We got a backstage doctor. She, uh, clear, or he, I don't remember. But the doctor, anyway, clears Raquel for her match later. Because, um, I didn't mention this, but, uh, Rhea Ripley injured, uh, or I guess injured slightly Raquel's ankle in the little bit of a scuffle they had there moments ago. But her ankle has taken damage, like I said, so she's not going into her match 100%. And we're going into that match right now. Women's Tag Team Championships are on the line. Liv Morgan, Raquel Rodriguez defending against Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville. Let me see if I can do it how they announce her on the, on the show. Chelsea! Oh, that was awful. I'm just going to stop now. All right, the match begins. Liv, Liv needing to step up for Raquel uh, because she uh, she's, has to step up for Raquel. Raquel being injured. I don't know what I'm going for here. Anyway, immediately Liv Morgan eats a kick to the face. She is off to a fantastic start. Morgan battles back, hitting an oblivion on Green. Sonya knees her in the face. Good lord. And then Green hits a unprettier. Liv Morgan kicks out of that. Holy crap. 
Raquel, at this point, is too injured to really do anything about Liv Morgan taking yet another knee to the face. And we have new women's tag team champions. It's Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville. They get a big old fireworks celebration. Hell yeah. Uh, another short match, but it was pretty sweet. I kind of liked it. The, those knees from Sonya, they looked absolutely fantastic. Uh, right on the button. Titles on the move yet again, but uh, I mean, I'll say it again. As long as if they can stay put for a little bit, I like their new home. I like Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville as champions. More than I like them, like uh, Raquel and Liv Morgan, but we'll see. Is there possibly a breakup for Liv and Raquel in coming that would add a little bit of interesting something for for Raquel Rodriguez? She is just so boring. 7 out of 10, though. Pretty good match. Seth Rollins getting interviewed now. He is wearing a mesh turtleneck. Oh my goodness, that is impressive. Finn Balor with his purple tiger stripe long sleeve button up. That is a mouthful. Uh, wow, some interesting clothing being wear, worn right here. Uh, he wants Seth to give him another shot at the title. Seth says, right here, right now, whenever, however, all that stuff. Balor bonks Seth with a chair, and that is the end of that conversation. Alpha Academy with Maxine versus the Viking Raiders with Valhalla in a Viking rules match. So we got some Viking shields. We got a cute little Viking boat thing attached to the ring. And the match is on, King. They use that little boat thing right away. Gable dives into the Raiders off of it. Bodies flying off of the fucking boat. It's carnage. We got uh, Alpha Academy. Get the tables. Nice little, uh, what do you call that, reference to the Dudley boys right there. I dig that. Raiders cut that off, though. That's boo. Um, Gable and Maxine decide it is a good time to have a jacket ceremony. I mean, right in the middle of a match. Valhalla says hell to the na na. She spears Maxine through a table. Good lord. Thumbs up for that. Otis sees red until Valhalla bonks him on the head with a Viking stick. It's a Viking, it's a Viking stick, damn it. Ragnarok from the Raiders for a big W right here and a wild match uh, from start to finish. Right out of the gate, they're jumping off the boat until the end. It was it was quite good. Nice spots. I mean, for some reason, Titus O'Neil was on commentary for this match. Really, uh, I don't I have really no idea why he was there, but he was losing a shit on commentary, uh, kind of at the wrong times. But it was it was entertaining. Good match. Seven and a half out of ten. We move on, Shayna Baszler versus Nikki Cross, who comes out of the gate with some craziness, but she gets quickly put down by uh, a Carefuda clutch, and Shayna Baszler wins. Poor Nikki, man. I mean, please put her back in NXT or something. I mean, I, I she's she's so awesome. I mean, I don't like what they've, they've, well, they haven't done anything with her for like the last year, so please do something with her. Ronda Rousey appears in a safe, isolated area in the crowd because, you know, she's being a heel tonight. She's chirping Shayna Baszler. She calls out, or uh, sorry, uh, Shayna call, uh, calls out Ronda for a fight right here, right now. Ronda says she'll do Shayna a favor and get her booked for a match at SummerSlam. She says she ain't going to be fighting in Atlanta. The crowd loves it. And, I mean, yeah, I that's fine. I mean, I again, don't like Nikki being used as, like, a stepping stone, basically, for for a moment between Sh uh, Shayna and Ronda, but it was a pretty nice little promo here between Ronda and Shayna. I I don't hate this; it's pretty good. Uh, we got a quick little thing of Ricochet calling out Logan Paul for a match next week. Okie dokie. And now it is Miz TV time with Becky Lynch as the special guest. The Miz goes right into Becky's recent losing streak. Becky, in response. In response, hums all of the chairs out of the ring, gets in the Miz's face, and she is 7.9 out of 10 pissed off. Miz makes things a little bit better by bringing out Trish Stratus and Zoe Stocks. Miz, you, you crazy man. Trish twists the knife. Becky unloads until Trish agrees to a rematch. After Trish lays down, ground rules at as a brawl breaks out. Brecky, uh, Brecky. Getty, uh, Becky getting the better of Stratus this week. Great segment right here. Uh, I mean, Lynch, Lynch was on point. She was very fired up. I really liked her intensity. Trish, mostly great. You know, she she's a little fumbly with the words, but the words that she, say, that she is saying are very good. It's just she's still a little bit rusty, but she's getting better and better each week. Thumbs up. Good segment. We got Shinsuke Nakamura going up against Bronson Reed next. Bronson imitates Shinsuke's uh, corner kicks things, doing the blah, 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 
fucking love that. That's amazing. Nakamura exposes the the nipples, goes for a king a king shasa. I can't fucking speak today, y'all. Goes for a king king shasa. Reed squashes him instead. Whoopsie daisy. Champa shows up, attacks Bronson Reed, and the match is disqualified. Boo, boo, I say. Shinsuke agrees. Kicks Ciampa in the face and then leaves. Uh, possible triple threat here and coming for SummerSlam, maybe. Ciampa, Shinsuke, Bronson, Reed. I think that would be a banger of a match. Just, just get it booked. Let's do it. Main event time. Undisputed tag team championships on the line. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn defending against Dom Mysterio and Damian Priest with the rest of the Judgment Day. Rollins dives onto Finn Balor out of nowhere, chases him to the back. Sammy takes a nasty choke slam on the apron. Ouch. Ripley tosses Kevin Owens into the steps. Liv Morgan attacks now, getting her revenge. KO stunner on Priest. Zayn Haluva kick on Dom. And the champions retain. Uh, that was just a awesome, entertaining main event. Great performances all around, especially Kevin Owens, man. He is just having a ton of fun in this match right here. 8 out of 10. Great stuff. And that's the end of the show. Uh, straight up. Got a shout out, Hot Lana. They were a awesome crowd out there. Really added a lot to a great Raw this week overall. I thought they did a really good job heating up a lot of the rivalries going into SummerSlam. Possibly teasing some uh, potential matches that could still be made. And I thought the matches on this show were quite good. Uh, but come on, y'all. You gotta start doing something with Nikki Cross. She's, she's too awesome, but pretty damn good show this week. 8 out of 10 for Monday Night Raw. We'll go to NXT 2.0. They're kicking off with Mello and Trick Williams in the ring, calling out Ilya Drogonoff to come out and have a chat. Ilya comes out. They have a solid little back and forth segment right here. Nice way to open up the show. Ilya rocking a, I don't know, kind of a mustache goatee thing. I honestly, I like, I am uh, all about beards and all that stuff. But honestly, I think for some reason it makes Ilya more intense looking when he's clean shaven. That's. I might be on an island by myself on that one. We got the Don. He is out and reunites with Stax. Oh, that is awesome. Angel Garza and Humberto Carrillo versus Frazier, Nathan Frazier, and Dragon Lee. Lee hits a, hits a backflip DDT for the win. Uh, there was a lot going on in this match. I was not expecting uh, this to be so damn good. Uh, but welcome back, Los Lotharios. That by far was the best match I've ever seen them in. That was dope. We got uh, the pants ripping segment. Everything was in there. Uh, Lee and Frazier just, I mean, awesome chemistry with each other against Humberto and Garza. I mean, wow. Great high flying, hard hitting as well. I was blown away by this. 8 out of 10, great match. We got Gigi Dolan versus Kiana James up next. Kiana and Gigi battle over the loaded handbag or purse, if you will. Kiana takes advantage, hits a 401k for the W. I like the name 401k for her finisher. That's I like that. But it was a, an okay short match. Meh. Reggie makes a tag team match with Axiom. Axiom reminds Reggie that they are not a tag team. Reggie reminds me that his name is not Reggie and his name is Scripps. But hey... Got to admit, Scripps Reggie kind of growing on me a little bit here. We got Bronco Nima and Lucian Price versus Axiom and Scripps. Scripps decides, I'm going to blindside my own partner. Kind of a running theme in the WWE right now, but he blindsides Axiom. Newcomers, Nima and Price pick up a W. And a new partner in Scripps. I'm not sure if he's, are, are we doing a manager role? What I, I'm confused, but anyway, interesting. Like I said, not sure if he's going to be a manager. Is this a trio team now? Where, wh what does Axiom's role play in this? Interesting. We'll see how it goes. We got Stax with an actual family. Oh my god. The family is finally more than two people. There's like eight of them now. This is sick. They bring out the Dawn. Oh, Tony brags about their master plan working perfectly over Gallus. And shouts out his boy Stax for a job well done while he was gone. Uh, Gallus arrive, they talk some shit, they get in the ring, Coffee pulls out a very cute little bat, I mean, it is adorable. The family, they're all armed with golf clubs and crowbars, they fend off Gallus, raise the tag team titles, and oh, that was a good segment, I'm liking it. Hopefully this little family of people stick around, now we're starting to get to like the next level of this family, the Don thing. Uh, Tony, Tony D wearing the pinstripe suit, looking fucking awesome, good segment, thumbs up. 
We got Mellow and Trick. They are met by Schism and... Dude, this is the funniest thing I saw all week, but they are with these extra masked members, and one of the members back there with his fucking little yellow mask on, super shifty-eyed the whole entire time. My wife and I were just fucking... It was so freaking funny. Go out of your way to uh, track down this little part here. It was like a minute, but it was so freaking funny. Whoever that shifty-eyed guy was, fuck yeah, bro. That was hilarious. Probably going to get fired for that, though. Anyway, Electra Lopez with Vice versus Thea Hale with Duke. Thea gets tossed around for a couple minutes. Then she catches Lopez in a Kimura, forcing her to tap out in another win for Thea as she stays hot. She cuts a promo after, calls out the champion. She wants another shot at that title, baby. Tiffany Stratton comes out. She accepts the match, no problemo. Until Thea decides she's going to make it a submission match. Locks in a Kimura, mat, uh, Kimura lock on the champion. She squeals and says, let go, please. So, fuck yeah, we're going to get another match. Maybe this time Thea gets it because she is fantastic right now. Hail, yeah. We move on. It is Aura Mensa with the meta metaphor versus Eddie Thorpe. So, we got Noam Dar being wheeled around in a wheelchair. He looks absolutely dreadful. He's very... Very miserable now that he doesn't have his cup anymore. He's just, like, comatose now. He looks... I absolutely love it. I really like this. Uh, let's see how long that goes on for, but I'm, I love it. Metaphor, roll a lifeless Noam Dar into the ring. The referee is distracted by that. Dijak shows up out of nowhere, blasts Eddie in the face with a boot. Mensa picks up a W. And Dar, fantastic out there. Pretty much just doing nothing, but... He was so good at it, the lifelessness of his body when he got rolled in the ring. Fantastic. The match was whatever. We got Davenport and Perez. They get interviewed in separate rooms, but they're talking together. I hate when they do this, uh, but they're talking about their upcoming match. Perez says that she's angry. She's going to unleash. Davenport calls her a child. Eh, it was okay. Main event time. North American Championship. Wesley defending against Dom Mysterio with his second title match this week. Uh, with Rhea Ripley, of course. Dom takes the North American title, starts to walk away with it. Lee dives into him, not having any of that. Judgment Day arrive, distracting the referee. Rhea bonks Lee in the head with the belt. Dom pins. And new North American champion. Oh my god, it is Dom a freaking stereo, baby. Uh, wow. I was not expecting that, but I am amped. For Dirty Dom Dom to be a champion in the WWE, that is awesome. Match was fine, pretty solid. Uh, Dom Mysterio, man, despite what the crowd was saying all throughout that match, saying that they're chanting at him, you're not ready. A few people saying, yes, he is. I would be. I think he is. For his age, way, way beyond his years. Anyway, um, this should be a really fun title run. It's... You know, I'm kind of sad that Wesley is taking the blow here, but, you know, with all the shenanigans, it's, I don't think it's going to hurt his stock all that much. Wesley, great champion, but uh, this will be exciting. Very, very interesting to uh, pull the trigger here. And an interesting NXT this week. Pleasantly surprised with Lost Lotharios. That was, that was great. Hale was strong as always, and cool to see the Don back, and he has a family now, so that's cool. And Dirty Don, man, winning gold, I'm all about it, I love it. Shut those people up chanting, he ain't ready, Dom, you show him what's up. Uh, solid NXT this week, 6 out of 10. We go now, it is dynamite time there in Boston for blood and guts. Sorry about that. All right, so we start off with the FTW championship match. Hook defends against Jack Perry or Jungle Boy. I'm going to call him Jack Perry from now on because he's a heel, and I think that's what he wants to be called. So anyway, uh, he comes out to uh, a Beethoven song now. I don't hate it. I think it kind of fits. It's not the worst. Uh, Hook T-bones Jack Perry off of the apron. Looks fucking very painful. Almost fucking broke his neck. Perry distracts the referee, kicks Hook in the dick, bashes his skull in, but Hook kicks out of that. Damn. Referee taken out yet again. Can't count the fall for Hook. Jack boinks Hook with the belt, pins, slow count, and no FTW champion. It is Jack Perry. Good opening match right here. Hook was throwing Jack around with a whole variety of suplexes. Well done. Hook playing the heel role, or not Hook, uh, Jungle Boy or Jack Perry, playing the heel role well. I, I am liking this new uh, thing for Jungle Jack or whatever. 7 out of 10, good match. 
And he should be a really, I think that's the perfect title to put on him right now. FTW should add to his heel role, especially if he like runs away like a chicken a lot of the time. That could be a lot of fun. Anyway, moving on. It is, what do we got? What we got? MJF and Adam Cole. They are, they're hanging out. I think this is from a segment from last week because they're eating spicy wings and they accidentally drink 100% pure alcohol, which leads to them hitting the double clothesline. On a poor, innocent waiter. Good God, but this segment was fucking hilarious. I love it. Thumbs up. Britt Baker versus Kayla Sparks. This is a squash match. Britt wins. Meh. We got Cole and MJF again. They're getting interviewed backstage. Max has matching trunks for him to wear. And Adam Cole has matching jackets. I mean, oh my God, dude. They're, they're, this is, this is fantastic. I love this. Thumbs up again. We go to the Blind Eliminator Tournament final match as Danny Garcia, Sammy Guevara versus Adam Cole and MJF, baby. They come out to a remix of their songs. MJF goes absolutely bananas. He loves it. He's hugging Adam Cole. Very, very cute. And then they have a full-on dance-off. Takes place before the bell, the match even begins. Lots of awkward, terrible dancing. I loved it. Thumbs up. MGF with an extremely rare dive to the outside. That was that was something. We got the double clo- clothesline on Danny Pins. And Colin MJF win the Blind Eliminator Tournament. Fuck yeah, man. Over the top entertaining. Just going all in with the silliness, the craziness. A full dance off. I mean, come on. So as long as you're in the right mood, this was a lot of fun. 7 out of 10 for the match, I guess. I don't know. Kind of hard to score. But yeah, good shit. Cole holding Maxwell's title. This upsets Maxwell just a little bit, but it's okay. They hug it out. Just a little bit of a misunderstanding. And then FTR arrive, and a whole bunch of stuff happens. They talk, and yeah, that's going to be fun. MJF and Adam Cole versus FTR. Is MJF going to turn on him? I don't know. I can't wait, though. We go now to the main event already. It is Blood and Guts time. The Elite versus Blackpool Combat Club. So if you're unaware... Of what Blood and Guts is. It's basically a War Games match. If you're unaware what War Games is. War Games is a double. There are two wrestling rings put side by side. With a steel cage put over top of it. Uh, Two teams of five go up against each other. They will enter the ring in like five minute increments. Until the whole. All ten guys are in the ring. And then the match officially begins. First to get the pinfall or submission wins the match. Okay so we go. Oh god let's just dive in. Claudio versus Kenny Omega to start off this thing, and then Pac enters next. They start teaming up on Omega until Hangman evens it up at twos. Moxley comes in hot with a fork. I mean, a fork. Yes, a fork. Stabbing and biting Kenny Omega. Good God. John Moxley pours glass onto the mat because that's a great idea, and ev- oh my God, everybody gets onto that glass, dude. It, that glass played so many roles into, oh, just, God damn it. Nick Jackson makes the Blackpool Combat Club pay, dropping them into the glass a whole bunch of times. BCC get their turn slamming Kenny and Nick into the glass. I mean, oh god, if you don't like this kind of stuff, you're not going to like this match. There's a lot of people falling into glass and stuff. Yuta, uh, Yuta then, or Yuta with Mac, or Yuta and Mac Jackson enter, holy crap, I'll get it. Takeshka beelines for Kenny Omega as Moxley brings in a bed of frickin' Nails, like a piece of wood with nails sticking out of it. Fucking outrageous. Moxley sets that up in the corner. Sparta kicks Kenny Omega into it and then slams him onto the nails to boot. I mean, ow, a little bit, but thumbs up. That was dope. Ibushi enters next. The crowd is losing it. Ibushi puts Moxley on the nail bed, gives him a standing moonsault. Oh my god. Matt and Yuta, they climb up to the top of the cage, and then, oh god, things get a little bit crazy, a little bit sweaty palms. Jackson delivers numerous of those northern light suplexes up there. I got sweaty palms watching this. They, they eventually come down, but not Matt. Matt stays up there, and he rains down thumbtacks from above onto Pack and Claudio. They get slammed into the tacks. I love that image of Matt raining down the thumbtacks and Claudio and Pack looking up. Amazing imagery, thumbs up. Pac launches himself off of the cage, stomping 
uh, uh, the Elite through the table. I mean, oh my god, that was sick. Thumbs up. BCC have everybody locked into submissions as Claudio is swinging poor Mac Jackson around in the other ring. Then he puts him into a sharpshooter, sharpshooter. Pac decides, I'm going to take my ball and I'm going home. He leaves the match, ditching the BCC. Don Callis sneaks Takeshka out of there. So now they're down two members. Moxley is handcuffed. Yuta, at, at this point, he is left for dead. He's basically alone with the Elite. They damn near kill the guy, uh, strangling him with a, what do you call it, a, a chain. And the Elite win. Blood and guts. In Beantown. Good God Almighty. That was just violent. The violence was high in this match. Putting it lightly, I mean, high tension moments up there on the top. I was very nervous that someone was going off of there. I just, you know, someone's going to want to try to uh, one-up the Mankind Undertaker spots. One of these days, someone's going to try and do it, and it's going to be nuts. But Jesus, man, so many crazy spots. A lot, a lot, a lot of weaponry, the glass, the nails, thumbtacks, tables, chairs, you name it. It's all in there. Crazy unique high spots. I mean, Moxley, Moxley doing 92% of the bleeding and the hardcore shit. Just fuck yeah. Eight and a half out of ten. And that is the end of a bloody good dynamite. Holy shit. I mean, Jack Perry should be... That should be a really fun heel run, man. I'm, I'm excited to see what he's going to do as a heel champ. Should be good. Uh, nothing against Hook. It was just kind of... It's run its course, him as the FTW champion. He's got to move on to something else. So we'll see what's going on with him. Uh, yeah, like I said, I'm curious what Hook's going to do. MGF and Adam Cole, they continue to be absolutely adorable. And another instant classic, blood and guts, an absolute war. If you're not into the blood and guts kind of thing, then I guess you're shit out of luck because that was half of the half a dynamite was this blood and guts match but really good shit great dynamite eight out of ten we will do rampage now because they're still in boston they're starting off with a royal rampage royale thingy it's uh with the two rings you got 10 men per ring and the winner will get a tnt title shot it's basically a royal rumble with two rings pretty wicked so you got darby starting in one ring nick wayne starting in the other ring uh, we got Minoru Suzuki making an appearance in this match. That was a pleasant surprise. I like that. There was a wicked Hurricanrana cutter combo from Matt Seidel and Brother Zay. Had to shout that move out. That was sick. Thumbs up for that. Wayne hops into the other ring for a second to help out Darby. I, I thought that wasn't allowed, but they did it. It comes down to the final two. It is Darby and Swerve. You would think it was going to be Darby and um, Wayne, but Swerve eliminates Wayne right before the final. So it's Darby and Swerve. Prince Nana smacks Darby with the skateboard. Swerve then power bombs Darby onto the skateboard with the truck side up, bro. That is fucking gnarly. I used to skateboard, and uh, skateboards are extremely heavy. Trucks are pure steel, and that just ouch. Just straight up ouch. Darby spears Swerve through the ropes. Swerve feet hit the ground first, and Darby wins. Uh, this was just really cool to see uh, basically a Royal Rumble with two rings. Can't say I've ever seen that before, but it was a... Royale, there's a lot of crazy shit going on, very entertaining, good, really good way to kick off Rampage, 7.5 out of 10 for this Battle Royale thingy, we move on, it is the Acclaimed versus QTV and his little group of people, uh, we got a nice rap from Caster, that was good as always, the Acclaimed pick up a fairly quick win with the arrival and a mic drop as they build up more momentum towards the trio's championship match that they are heading towards, I imagine, Solid match overall, pretty standard stuff here. And we move on to the main event, TBS Championship match, Chris Statlander defending versus Marina Shafir. Chris decapitates Shafir with a discus clothesline, Tombstone, or she calls it the Saturday Night Fever, to retain the championship. Uh, honestly, not enough, I don't, there was like, I think four or five minutes left in the show when this thing kicked off, I think you know, time was uh, not of the essence for this match. It was quite quick. Didn't really get enough time to really get the get the engine going on this match, sadly. I think the Royale took too much time. But, uh, yeah, it was uh, not, not really not much to say about it. And that's the end of the show. 
The Royale was a lot of fun. I, I'm guessing that it ran long because, I don't know, the rest of the show definitely didn't feel like they had enough time to spread it across the Acclaimed and the TBS Championship match. Uh, no offense to the Acclaimed, but I think they should have probably cut out that spot there and just gave the, the TBS Championship match more time, but, you know, it is what it is. Time is hard to manage. Five and a half out of ten for Rampage. We'll do SmackDown. I am skipping Collision this week. There's just too much damn wrestling, and I have a family function to go to, so I'm just I'm not gonna have enough time to get through that. My apologies, but I think we'll we'll make it without Collision this week, okay? But we'll do SmackDown. They were in Orlando, Florida this week. Got it starting off with a U.S. Championship qualifier match, Fatal Four Way, Rey Mysterio. Versus Sheamus, versus Cameron Grimes, versus L.A. Knight. Yeah. Oh, I, just, I saw a little video of uh, L.A. Knight before he was uh, bigger, and he was in a workout video with Triple H, and they're doing a little workout thing, and you hear Triple H, he's like, all right, guys, good job. Are we ready for the next one? You hear a couple guys go, yep, yep, and you hear L.A. Knight, yeah. Like, <laughs> he's had it. He's always had it, man. All right, anyway, to the match. Rey Mysterio struggling, uh, doing the beats of the Valorant with Sheamus. He's, like, trying to stand up on the bottom rope. It's cute. It's funny. Sheamus has a little smirk on his face. Good stuff. Rey hits a double 619. A splash on Grimes. Pins. But Austin Theory pulls out Rey Mysterio, uh, breaking up the pin. Escobar runs down to take out Austin Theory. LA Knight looks like he has it won, but... It is broken up by Sheamus, which is then broken up by Cameron Grimes, who caves him in, which is then broken up by Rey Mysterio, who out of nowhere just splashes or some shit. No, he hits a Huracarana pin on Cameron Grimes, and he snags the victory right here. It is going to be Rey Mysterio will face his friend Santos Escobar for a shot at the U.S. title. Ooh, I I like, I daddy like, daddy like. Good match to kick off the show. Uh, I'm... I got double faked out by the ending there, man. I thought for sure it was going to be LA Knight 100%. And I didn't even think about the Escobar Rey Mysterio thing. So, I, yeah, I think that's uh, pretty neat. Uh, sad for LA Knight, but uh, good match, though. He had some nice near falls there. Everyone had a good amount of time to shine. I thought, you know, Cameron Grimes was flashing out there a little bit. I was pleasantly surprised to see him in this match. Good way to kick off the show. Seven out of ten. We got Charlotte Flair up next going up against EO Sky with Bailey on commentary. EO hits a big sit out power bomb on Flair, looked pretty nice. And then a spooky video of Shotzi plays. She's calling out Bailey. Bailey gets scared and she leaves EO all alone. A nasty stomp to the tummy of Charlotte Flair by EO that just looked very painful. A natural selection from Charlotte Flair finally able to put EO away. Definitely the best match I've seen out of Flair in a little bit right here. Still, you know, not flawless, but much, much better. Uh, she worked very, very well with EO. I thought both were looking good. Nice counters. Really good stuff right here. You keep it up, Charlotte Flair. You just might make it in one of these days. 7 at that. Asuka attacks Flair after the match, and then she bounces. We got new North American champion Dom Mysterio is congratulated by Butch. Who is speaking actual words? Wow, that is, uh, what a treat. That's very, very rare, and he was, like, really calm, which was weird. Butch also asked for a shot at said title. Dom ain't feeling it, but it's okay. Shawn Michaels appears. Almost calls Butch Pete Dunn, but that's okay. He's gonna get the match made for later tonight. Very, very nice. We got Austin Theory versus Santos Escobar, because Theory is just angry at Santos, and he can't wait for his match at SummerSlam, so they're going to do it now. Santos hits a huge top rope Huracarana. That was awesome. Theory gets sent flying across the whole damn ring. Escobar hits a Phantom Driver, pins the United States Champion. I almost said he won the United States Championship, but it wasn't on the line, but he does pin the champion. Very nice preview for possibly the match at SummerSlam. Uh, if it is a sign of things to come, this was some pretty nice... Wrestling right here. Theory hitting some impressive offense throughout. Good good flow throughout the match. I Yeah, seven and a half out of ten. A uh, little thing of Bobby Lashley shown speaking with Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams. Very, very brief. Like, if you blink, you miss it kind of thing. So, I don't... Okay. 
We got the North American Championship match. It is Dom Mysterio with Rhea Ripley defending against Butch. Rhea hands Dom a chain. Ridge runs down to stop the shenanigans. Cool. Prince, who had his shoulder separated last week in his match, he gets rolled down in the wheelchair by Wilson to guilt trip the Brutes. Pretty deadly cause a bunch of shenanigans. Rhea Ripley cheap shots Butch. Dom takes advantage to retain his North American Championship. A solid first defense for Dom Dom. Uh, as expected, he uh, uses shenanigans to retain his championship. But, you know, at least Butch got out there. I was very pleasantly surprised to A, see Butch speak and to get this opportunity. A main event spot on SmackDown. Well deserved. Hopefully this is a, a, a start of things to come for Butch. Maybe some bigger things right here. We'll see. We move on. It is Jey Uso and Roman Reigns. They're having the little uh, bloodline contract signing thingy, you know. Uh, it will be a tribal combat match now, apparently. Okie dokie. Jay still wants to go through with it. Signed. Handshake. Solo flips the table. Goes after Jay, but Roman stops him from attacking Jay. Solid segment to end the show. I mean, it was very nice not to have... 80% of SmackDown, Roman's entrance and acknowledgement situation. So I like that and a solid segment to end the show right here. Nice to see matches given some time this week. Like I said, you you take 40 minutes away from Roman Reigns' entrance. You spread that out uh, to some of the matches on the card and it was much, much better. Uh, too bad that Selena wasn't on the card though to enjoy that extra time that was being thrown around. That's just fucking classic. Lashley is up to something, though, man. I am hoping that he is recu recruiting uh, new people for the Hurt Business. Let's let's hope the Hurt Business is coming back. Haven't seen MVP in a hot minute. Good SmackDown this week. Seven and a half out of ten. We will go now to the three stars of the week. And we got a couple of shout-outs here. I want to shout-out Alpha Academy versus the Viking Raiders in, a, in that Viking Rules match on Monday Night Raw. That was uh, quite a lot of fun from start to finish. High-octane, pretty damn fun match. And then uh, that two-ring Rampage Royale match thing. I liked it. I'm a, I'm a sucker for Royales. They're, they're a lot of fun. And this one with the two rings, I, I got a kick out of that. So I'm going to shout that one out as well. And now for the official three stars of the week, starting with the third star. It is Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn versus Dom Mysterio and Damian Priest. The undisputed tag team championship match on Raw. Just a great little match right here. I mean, I, I don't know. Like, Dom was having a hell of a week. Wins a championship, involved in another championship match. Dom is making moves, y'all. So, check out that match. Really great stuff. Uh, gotta give second star this week to Los Lotharios versus Dragon Lee and Nathan Frazier on NXT. Blown away by how uh, very, very good that match was. Uh, normally, Los Lotharios has kind of fallen into the comedy thing, but they've rebranded, and now it looks like they're ready to kick some ass. That match was pretty damn awesome. I would recommend you check that out. Dragon Lee and Frazier, I mean, they have great chemistry together. Teaming up together this time. Hell yeah. First star of the week goes to... It's going to Blood and Guts. The Elite versus the Blackpool Combat Club on Dynamite. If you, As long as you like long, bloody, gory matches with glass and thumbtacks and fucking forks and shit like that. You'll have a great time with this one like I did. I, I'm all about that kind of stuff. The Blood, the Guts. Great time and a great match. My favorite match of the week. And that is the show, everybody. Like I said, not doing Collision this week. It's just too damn much wrestling this week, and I got other shit to do. But thank you again so much for listening. You guys are awesome. We will be doing episode 50 of the GamerCast this week. Going to be doing a, a fun mystery game from my past, so be on the lookout for that. They'll be dropping on Tuesday. Uh, Hockey Cast should be going this week. We'll see if the, the news might be a little bit too light this week, so we might move it to next week. We'll just play it by ear. If you want to keep updated, just check out Twitter and all that stuff, even though Twitter is basically dead at this point. But it is what it is, and thank you again, everybody, for listening. You can check out the YouTube channel where all these are getting uploaded. There's some other videos over there. Be playing video games you can check out as well. Check out any of the prior GX Gamer Casts and all of that great stuff. 
And yes, we will be back again soon with more GX Plus Cast.